Bags down, spikes on, welcome to the track. My name's Colin Waitsman, going to be your host for this episode of Track World News. And we have a lot of things that are going on recently, especially with track and field. We just had the World Athletics have their yearly award show. We had a interesting article or an interesting piece on the sport of track and field and other smaller sports within the NCAA on 60 Minutes. And we also had a few meets uh, happen for, for indoor. So we're going to go over all of that and more in this episode. First, I uh, want to cover the 60 Minutes um, special or excerpt story, whatever you want to call it. Uh, for those that don't know, 60 Minutes is a TV show in the United States. I don't know if they do it internationally, but it's definitely in the United States where they cover a variety of, of different pieces um, that cover politics, economics, sports in this in this matter um and other and other things and it's it goes of course over the course of an hour and one of the pieces that they did were cut it covering the cutting of different ncaa sports that are traditionally known as secondary sports or non-revenue generating ones so the cutting of uh clemson's track and field minnesota track and field gymnastics tennis swimming all of that and the implications that it has because uh, the story was very, very well done. Uh, it's over Twitter and uh, on the internet. If you look up the 60 Minutes piece, I'll try to put it in the description uh, here in the podcast if you'd like to take a look at it. And it had a lot of information and numbers that I had no idea about. The most shocking number and the most shocking stat was how 85% of Team USA's medalists were college athletes. 85 percent <laughs> that is an insane amount so by cutting the sport or by cutting many of these sports like track and field swimming tennis you're losing all of those student athletes and you're and you're no longer going to have them competing at a high level uh, they, they also pointed out over a 10-year period of the 370 swimmers that team usa had 336 of those swimmers competed in college so a lot of athletes that compete in these Olympic sports are coming from colleges. And so by cutting these sports, you're going to be losing that because we don't have athletics set up like Europe does for better or for worse, where they have government subsidies or individuals are, are purchasing training sessions or, or going through coaches because they don't have an NCAA system. I mean, 600 uh, athletes uh, competed at the, I think it was the, was it the Division One level? They, they speak about it in the, in 60 minutes, but 600 athletes came over from international um, competition to compete here in the United States. Oh yeah, and then they competed back with uh, their home nation for the Olympics. So there's a lot of athletes that are, and a lot of students that are going to be affected by cutting these major sports. And it, it's a shame that this is happening because, I mean, I'm really mad about it for track and field, but I could only imagine that the swimming community and the gymnastics community are all very upset about this as well. And the two major focuses or the points that many of these sports have been cut um, are, are two major things, obviously. One, COVID, and so financially it doesn't make sense. And while I hate hearing that, I know that it's the truth because majority of schools are not making any money outside of basketball and football. And so if you don't have football or you, the football is bringing in a fraction of the amount of money that it normally brings in, or same with basketball, if you don't have a basketball season, or you're bringing in a fraction amount of money that you normally would, that's got to come out of somewhere, and it's not going to come out of your money makers. It's going to come out of the sports that aren't making that much. And it's a shame because that means that it's going to be cutting track and field, tennis, and baseball, all those types of things. And so it's it sucks, it's a reality, but it's the reality we live in. Second is Title IX. Uh, so Title IX is making sure that there's equity amongst the sexes of having uh, the fair amount of sports uh, for a scholastic uh, program. And so that would mean that if you have football, you can't cut the football team because they have the largest amount of student athletes. Uh, they have like what about a average team? I think it's like 100, 115 male student athletes. 
And then, so that means you have to have an equal amount of 115 female student athletes uh, that, that are competing. And so if you don't have as many women's sports, uh, so if you only have like seven women's sports and you have eight men's sports, you're probably not going to have the same amount of equality of membership. So you're going to have a Title IX issue. And then if you have this these Title IX issues, you're not going to be getting as much funding or you're not going to be getting as much of assistance from the NCAA and eventually you're going to be in violations and then you're going to have scholarships taken away and a whole bunch of other stuff no need to get into a sports law class here uh, but you're going to have all these issues and so those are that reason is kind of speeding up why a lot of these programs are leaving because now instead of adding more female programs uh, or adding more male programs if they have a, a lack of male um, diversity or attendance, which usually that's that's not the case. Usually it's they have less female sports. Instead of adding more female sports, they're going to be cutting more of these men's sports, which is why we saw with Minnesota, they're getting rid of track and field and gymnastics and tennis, the three sports that I had mentioned. And it's it stinks. Um, during this piece, um, they were speaking with one of the male student athletes who hopes to make the Olympics in, in gymnastics. And and they noted that Mike Coyle, who is the AD for University of Minnesota, didn't even offer an opportunity for teams to raise fundings to have a season, which is really eye-opening. Because you would think, I would think, if if it was a truly a money issue and, and, and it was only that, which the majority is, then why don't you let these schools fundraise their money or say hey track and field right now we're not getting as much funding as we need to be able to even have football or basketball you need to be able to raise two million dollars so you can have a season and if you can do that then you're golden i don't know why they don't say that because i feel if you give them a number and you say hey if you can raise this amount of money then you can have your season i'm sure that there would be a lot of schools that would be like Done. Got it. We're going. We're doing it right now. But they don't. And University of Minnesota didn't do that. I haven't heard anything with Clemson Track doing that, nor with the Tribe, uh, which is disappointing. Because if you give people a number, you give people a point that they have to reach, people will tend to do that. And they haven't offered any insight on how to keep the sport just saying, no, we're closing it down. Which shows that I think there's something else going on here. I think it's not just money. I think money is a huge issue, of course. But I think there's something else that that we're not finding out, and hopefully the news will will be able to be able to break that down sooner or later. Next, uh, we're going to go into the world Ath that world athletics had their award show. Uh, I wasn't able to catch it live, but we did see that Mondo Duplantis won the male athlete of the year, and then Yulmar Rojas won the female athlete of the year. Uh, Mondo was in the pole vault, and Yulmar Rojas was in the triple jump. Love seeing the field events getting some play time here. Um, it's fantastic. We, we, we haven't seen this in a while, being able to see two jumpers, um, international jumpers, being able to, to take home the, the awards of Male and Female Athlete of the Year. They also had other awards given out, the President's Award, um, Service Award, Coaches, of, Coaches Award, and uh, a whole variety of other things. But those are the two main ones. And it, Mondo, I think, was the clear clear-cut winner. I mean, he's currently up for the athlete of the year for all sports, <laughs> and he's going up against the likes of Khabib Nam Gurenov, uh, the UFC fighter. I know I definitely butchered his name. LeBron James, Dustin Johnson, um, and there's two others, uh, two other athletes, I believe a soccer player and a fighter, too, a female fighter. I can't remember the name, sorry. Um, but yeah, going up against uh, Katie Taylor, and then there's uh, another soccer player. I can't remember her name, but the fact that he's going up for the World Athlete of the Year, not just for track and field, uh, is very impressive. Uh, Yomar Rojas, I think, was a it was a closer pick. I mean, she was she got the world record in the triple jump, which obviously is great, fantastic. I think it was a little closer. I didn't have her as winning. Uh, I I'll get into who I thought I I had winning in a little bit because I don't want to um, spoil things, but didn't have her winning. But I'm glad. I'm I'm, I'm happy that she did. And in regards for Mondo, with this the athlete of the year overall, I think that he he's deserving of it. I mean, he's the only one that has world records. Uh, he broke two world records, technically three if you'd count the indoor and the outdoor world record. But technically, the outdoor world record isn't a thing, so he has the world best. But he broke three world records essentially, 
And the other athletes, they're fantastic and they were great in their respective sport for what they did, but they don't have any world records. Dustin Johnson didn't break a world record. LeBron James didn't break a world record. Khabib didn't break a world like they, These are great athletes, but they didn't break world records. Um, I don't think that Mondo will win, unfortunately. I think they'll probably, if I had to guess, I'm, I'm thinking that it's going to go to Dustin Johnson. I I don't think it should, but I think it probably will. Uh, one of the more famous athletes, which is unfortunate. So for next year, I'm making my way too early prediction for who's going to be the athlete of the year for 2021. On the female side, I think it's going to be Lezenbeck Gaudet. I thought she had it this year. She broke three world records in what, the 5K, 10K, and then the 10K road race. Uh, she's going to have even more racing under her belt and she's going to be a year older because she would have been the youngest athlete to beat it since Sonia Richards Ross. And so I think having another, you know, another year of experience, more races under her belt, all that knowledge of what it takes to be running at an elite level is going to help her a lot moving forward. So I see her taking home the female athlete of the year next year. And then for the male, this, this one is, I think he, he, he's got a real shot. Um, it's kind of more of a dark horse, not a favorite. Uh, I have Michael Norman being the male athlete of the year next year. Why? Well, next year is an Olympic year. And he has shown to be one of the most versatile athletes that we have right now. He, one, versatile sprinters, I should say. He's one of the most versatile sprinters. He's shown to be running at an elite level from the 100 to the 400. If timing wasn't a factor and the events allowed him to, he is one of the few athletes that could genuinely make a final in the 100, the 200, the 400, the 4x1, and the 4x4. He is someone that could genuinely be in all five of those finals if timing allowed and if your body allowed. But we know that if you're going to compete at a high level in sprinting, being able to do all five of those is not realistic because of the 100 and the 400 timing wise. But he's an athlete that he has an opportunity to be in those times. He's ran, uh, he's one of the two or three athletes to run sub 10 in the, in the hundred. Uh, I think he has one of the, if, if it's not the world lead, he's one of the three or four fastest in the world in the 400. Obviously he's going to be on the, the four by four and he, he's shown to have elite speed in the two as well. So I think he's going to have a fantastic Olympics. He, I think he'll take home at least two medals, possibly more. Um, and I'd love to see what is what he does. I think he'll be beating out Noah Lyles. Noah Lyles will be his big competition, especially in the one and the two. But he's more versatile than Noah Lyles. Lyles doesn't go to the 400. And so if he can add a 4x4 medal or a 400 medal to his, you know, reign and maybe out beat uh, Noah Lyles in a few races, world championships or otherwise, he's got a shot. He's got a shot. So that's what I have for taking home the, the 2021 world athlete way, way in advance. And then this is a great year, a great week for track and field. We saw, what was it? Uh, four different meets going off, uh, at army, uh, San South Dakota state, uh, Appalachian state and Kansas state. All four of those teams, uh, all four of those locations had, uh, meets saw some saw some pretty good times. I mean, it's the first meet of the year. You're not going to see really great times going in. You're not going to see extremely far throws or jumps traditionally because what it's December. It was December fifth when these were happening, and you're not seeing finals or you're not seeing nationals until March. So yeah, most teams haven't even opened up yet. I mean, if if you look at some of the the top tens, uh, you, it there's some top tens that are, it's like, wow, you, yeah, there are not a lot of teams that competed. So not, not a ton, but there were two big standouts that I would, that I'd say, um, were, were pretty impressive. First, Ryan Krauser, you recognize his name because he was a finalist for the world athletics male athlete of the year. Uh, he opened up with a 2258 in the shot put, which is 74 feet. Uh, and the world lead. It was also the third farthest throw in indoors of all time. So he's coming out strong. He, he might have known like, hey, I'm not, I don't, I think this was a little bit before the world athletics uh, said who their, the winner was. Maybe he had a look, maybe he knew like he didn't win. He wanted to open up strong and show, and show why he deserved that, that athlete of the year. But I like it. 
Um, first real elite athlete to come out, throw a world lead, very impressive throw. Love to see how he continues with this indoor season. Uh, next we have from that very same meet, uh, Taishwin Te Shankar, sorry if I butchered your name, uh, high jumper from Kansas State. He jumped 224, which is uh, seven feet, four and a quarter inches. Uh, that was a school record and it would have been best for, it would have recorded for 10th best last year. Oh yeah, did I mention that that was during a pentathlon? So he had four other events that he was competing in and he still was able to jump seven, four and a quarter. He was doing what the high hurdles, the high jump, long jump, the 800 and shot put, I believe. And he was able to do all that in a day and still be able to jump a seven foot four, which I think is the world lead technically still, uh, as we said, very early on in the season, but interesting to see us going, you know, seeing where it is. That's great. I mean, it's, we're having our very first meets. There are very small ones. Obviously there's still some of the first meets. I know Clemson is supposed to have a meet uh, sometime after the holidays uh, or right before, maybe next weekend or the weekend after. Uh, so we'll see hopefully some other great times. We, ob uh, we obviously know that a uh, former guest on the show, Anthony Hamilton, high jumper, uh, he'll be testing that 224 for the, the NCAA lead. I saw he jumped some some pretty big times or pretty big heights on Instagram. So if you want to check him out or check that episode out, um, it's got it's got some pretty great insight on that. Otherwise, just awesome seeing indoor track and field coming back. Uh, obviously, there were no fans in, in, in attendance for, for many of these. Uh, there were masks worn for a lot of the assistants and, and helpers of the meet. Um, so it, it's just great to see the sports back. Sport back. I'll be continuing with updates every week for meets that happen, some of the highlights and what we can see moving forward. But thank you for listening to this episode of Track World News. If you enjoyed it, make sure that you follow us on Instagram. Uh, and give this this episode a like, share, follow, subscribe, a rating, it, it, whatever you do, it really helps us out. I really do appreciate it. Uh, yeah, and follow us on Instagram at Track World News. Uh, my name is Colin Waitsman. Have a good one and peace.